Well, housing taking a beating again. Zillow finding home values dropping 3% in the first quarter, the largest quarterly decline since back in 2008. And OWN America founder and CEO Greg Rand says things are going to be ugly for a while, but Prudential Douglas Elliman Vice Chair Dolly Lenz sees a glimmer of hope. Both join us now. All right, we'll start with the optimists here. Dolly, uh, where does the hope really spring from? Because we started to see this bottom that just is stuck in mud for home prices. There's no question. There's a bottom stuck in mud. There's a merry-go-round we can't get off, right? Foreclosures, dropping prices, dropping prices, more foreclosures, and we keep going round and round. However, places where there's employment, that's the big problem. New York, Texas, uh, Palo Alto, San Francisco Silicon area. Valley. Exactly. All those places actually have very good, st stable home prices. At least, if not better so, than that. So, Greg, if, if everybody focuses on growth in their own community, we wouldn't have a real estate problem? Is that correct? Well, we're going to have one because we have an overhang of foreclosures. I mean, that we all know about. Until we're done with that, we're not going to see the home prices bottom out nationally. There's anomalies out there for sure. The places that were more stable, like Dolly mentioned, Texas. Texas is a beautiful real estate market because it never went too crazy during the boom. It's not going to, it's not having a hard time right now because they've been attracting a lot of businesses in and employment. Uh, but in general, until we finish with this foreclosure inventory, we're not going to see the bottom line price. But haven't we seen data lately that indicate that finally prices are getting low enough where investors are getting back in, that there are sales where people say, okay, I'm going to actually get in and buy here because I'm comfortable with the price now. They are, but then they kind of change their mind again the next month. <laughs> you know, it, it really is amazing because they see the knife keep fall. Knife really keeps falling. Do you believe the National Association of Realtors inventory numbers, or are they they severely understating what the inventory is? I think they're understating it, and I think they're understating it with a reason. In other words, they're saying that it's not on the books yet. Shadow inventory. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, and Greg, the question the question is valuation. How does anybody realistically value in this environment? Well, listen, the thing that we've been doing the last years, which I think is dangerous, is we keep focusing on the short-term numbers. How did February compare to March? That but, doesn't but, help but you very forgive much. Forgive me, Greg, you're avoiding the question. The, the fact is, <laughs> you, that you people, the same classic people value. can't value these properties anymore. Before it was that they would value them too high. Now they're charges. People are valuing no too low. Oh, this absolutely. Because, you think that's true? Absolutely value too low. No question. Even Who's New doing York. That? Who's valuing Even them too Even New low? York. Look, it, it, it's, it's a cover your rear end story, right? The appraisers are better off valuing low and not having to explain explain it than they are valuing high, duh, why, you know? Greg? But the investors, you mentioned the investors earlier, in places like Florida, Arizona, parts of California, Nevada, where the foreclosure crisis is the most acute, they're reporting like 40, 50 percent of the sales right now are cash. Now those are not first time buyers, those they're are paying cash. Right. So the bright side of this market right now is that the people who are looking for an opportunity recognize, and a lot of international investors also, you probably see that, a lot of international money coming into American housing right now. Because I think they know something we take for granted. Demand for real estate if you're home. What are these foreigners buying? Condos we're, in Boca? We're sell, we're sell, we're, we focus on the single family, the two to four family market. So the small product categories. And we're seeing large investments being made in some of those distressed cities by international funds, international investors. Vegas, how does that look? Not good. But I never understood Vegas. Where does that make sense? Every single person I have who's wealthy gets to go to Vegas for free. So why would they buy it? <laughs> you know, I never understood the market. The high there rollers, all. exactly. exactly. <laughs> even the medium rollers, even low rollers. But uh, for a said while there, it looked like California housing, mm -hmm. 700,000 around that level, started to come back. Remember that mm -hmm. about a yes. year ago? Yes. Did that just stop? Well, the gas threat? prices don't help, no. right? Okay, so anything with a suburban sprawl is going to be in trouble. You have to drive, you're dead. And don't forget about a year ago. A year, a year ago, we had the home buyer tax credit, mm -hmm. which looked like a wonderful idea. But every time to who did the it look like a wonderful idea? Well, to the industry yeah. that they were going <laughs> to encourage people to buy homes. And what they did is they really gave us a roller coaster ride. We had a lot of real estate. Oh, but isn't it isn't it fair to say that that tax credit, which I think cost about twenty billion dollars, didn't work because we've seen didn't. the prices come back down? Of course, again. it only postponed the pain. That's all it did. Greg, did it work, do you think? It actually backfired, I think. It yeah. did worse than not work. Really? Yeah. It made things worse. Well, you know, we knew that we were going to see, that we were going to steal transactions from the future. We knew that. Anybody who's going to buy in August was nuts. You have to buy in June because then you'd get a tax credit. Now we're talking about double dip, right? You heard about the double dip conversation? That's only because last summer there was a little bit of upward pressure on price because of the artificial demand of the tax credit. So that artificial pressure on price gave people the impression of maybe a recovery. Oh, yeah. It's still the same dip. There's no double dip because there was no recovery in the middle, but it's creating this sort of renewed sense of pain and fear. Mm. Greg Ram, Dolly Lenz. Wow. I like this conversation. You guys are terrific. Again. Please come back. <laughs>